Good evening everyone. Thank you for joining me here on the Royal House of Ra. I am your host, Ramses Kufu El Ra. Today's show is episode 30. And we will talk about three, uh, uh, actually, yes, four, the last four dynasties before the Greek rulership of Kemet. And these dynasties are Dynasty 28, Dynasty 29, Dynasty 30, and Dynasty 31. Okay, and at the and also Dynasty 31 is also known as the Second Persian Period. This is where the Persian dynasty um the last dynasty before the Greeks was a Persian dynasty and this was the dynasty that was also associated with um, they were fighting with the Macedonians but we'll, we'll get into that and, and go into further about that uh, once again I'd like to thank those who continue their support of the show um, I really appreciate it. I thank those who had subscribed, the new subscribers. Thank you for subscribing. Um, I encourage you to um, share the content with others. Um, also, remember, uh, please subscribe and hit that notification button because you know when new shows appear. Uh, share the content and hit that like button. I would greatly appreciate that. So we're coming to a close with this uh, Foranic series. Uh, we still have some more um, things to talk about after these four dynasties. Because after these four dynasties, we're going to talk about the... I wouldn't really consider them dynasties because they should have been considered dynasty 32 and 33. But they're not even really considered that. Um, like... Right after the Persian dynasty, uh, uh, the second per Persian dynasty, which was dynasty 31, you had the Macedonian kings who ruled right afterwards. Uh, this was Alexander the Great, also known as Alexander III from Macedonia. Uh, he went down into Kemet, as you know. Uh, he conquered Kemet. Um, basically, he didn't really had to do fighting because the people invited him in because they wanted the Persians out. Um, so he was the first ruler of his Macedonian dynasty. Uh, then it was another member of his house, uh, Philip, and then Alexander the Fourth, and then the last ruling. Uh, dynasty of uh i wouldn't call it kemet at this time this is egypt uh was the ptolemaic dynasty and we know cleopatra is part of that dynasty she was the last reigning ruler of that dynasty and uh we'll we'll get into that and we'll talk about that all right but let's talk about what's going on with today's show but before we go on and talk about what's going on today's show, uh, I'm going to mention the dynasties, the years that these dynasties had began and end, and the pharaohs of these dynasties. And then we're going to go into reading about these various dynasties and what uh, had happened. And also you can leave a comment, um, but please if you leave a comment, be responsible. Uh, when you leave a comment. Uh, so let's get into this. Dynasty 28 uh, began between 404 to 339, I mean, excuse me, 399 BC. The pharaoh of this dynasty was only one pharaoh. His name was Amayat Taras. Uh, he reigned 404 to 399. 99 BC and there's no cartouche for him uh, then you have dynasty 29 which began 399 BC to 380 BC 
and it was two pharaohs of this dynasty. Uh, the first pharaoh of this dynasty was, uh, I'm going to try to pronounce the name, because some of these names are kind of a little difficult, but I'm going to do the best I can. Uh, Nefarud the first, and he reigned 399 to 393 BC. Then you have Hakor, who reigned 393 to 380 BC. Now you have the 30th dynasty, which began 380 to 343 BC. And there was three pharaohs of this dynasty. The first pharaoh of this dynasty was Nekhtebeth, who reigned 380 to 362 BC. Second pharaoh, Net Zoreb, who reigned 360 to 343 BC, and Jethard, who reigned 362 to 360 BC. Then you have Dynasty 31, which is the second Persian period. And that dynasty began 343 to 332 BC. And there was three pharaohs. Two of the pharaohs, there was no cartouche. The first pharaoh, they didn't have a cartouche, who was the first pharaoh of this dynasty, was Artaxas. The third, he reigned 343 to 338 BC. Second pharaoh was Darius the <coughs> third, excuse me, who reigned 336 to 332 BC. And then you have Arcesis, who had who reigned between 338 to 336 BC, and there was he had no cartouche. Okay, so let's get into this. With the death of Darius II in 405 BC, Amethras, prince of Salus who had been fighting a guerrilla action against the Persians for at least six years, declared himself king. Somehow he managed to assert his authority as far south as the old Kometan border at Aswan, but he is otherwise virtually unknown and was the sole king of the 28th dynasty. In the next dynasty founded by uh, Neferud I, the northern delta capital moved from Sassus to the more centrally placed uh, Mendes, indicating perhaps a stronger royal line arising from that city and the ousting of the previous one. To strengthen his claim, and position, Nefrut the first, like many before him, cast backwards to underline his legitimacy, associating himself with the uh, Satit uh, Renaissance policies. Certainly, there is far more evidence of building work and inscriptions in Kemet during his reign, largely located in the northern sphere than during those of his immediate predecessors. He also maintained the cult of the sacred Apis bull at Memphis and is recorded in a uh, Serapinum inscription as the capital was at Memphis. The presumption is that Neferud was buried there, but no royal tombs have been found despite intensive excavations in the 1980s. The torso of a glazed composition, uh, Ashaptit, inscribed for him, was found in a plundered sarcophagus at Mentes. And the other three examples of his. Uh, us uh, Yusha Habitat, excuse me, Us Habitat's one complete but repaired and two upper halves have no known uh, prevalence. 
Okay, for now before I go on now after the Darius the second was the um, he was the pharaoh of the twenty seventh dynasty. That was the first uh, Persian period when the Persians first came in. So obviously, um, the pharaoh of the twenty eighth dynasty, which he was from. Uh, Salus, uh, his name was um, Am Eurestus. Uh, so he was basically he was an indigenous. Uh, so he he fought a guerrilla warfare against the Persians, and finally, when the Persians were defeated, he restored the indigenous dynasties. But um, he only he was the only one who ruled his dynasty. And then the 29th dynasty rolled in with uh, Nefru the first. For about a year after the death of Nefru the first in 393 BC, there was confusion. His son and a usurper, uh, some, uh, let me pronounce this, Samantus, some some struggling for power. Both were overcome by an unrelated man, Hekar, who disregarded their year and dated the start of his own reign for from the death of Nefrud, uh, Akorsus, too, was concerned to present legitimate Continuity and associated himself with Nefru the First in such a blatant way on his monuments, naming his son after him into the bargain that he must have been trying to consolidate a relationship that had no factual basis. Nevertheless, uh, Akhorosis. 14-year reign stands out amongst those of the later kings as one in which an enormous amount of building and refurbishing took place. Now, when I say Akaras is Akar, okay, so, <clears throat> excuse me, Akar took more than a hand in Near Eastern politics as well. The Greek initially, the Greeks initially, the Spartans and then the Athenians were the main protagonists in the struggles against Persia by comparison. Kemet was merely a flea bite in the Persian army. Akar concluded a treaty with Athens in 389 BC, but it lasted only three years in the face of internal squabbling amongst the Greeks, which was settled by the Persian king Artaxas II, edict of 386 BC, giving him the cities of Asia Minor and Cyprus, and declaring the other Greek cities with a few exceptions, autonomous, so long as they did not make war on him. The Greeks had been uh, quietened and Kemet was isolated, thus attracting the attentions of Persia. Akar repulsed several attacks between 385 BC and 383 BC, largely with the use of renegade Greeks in the now cons uh, considerably strengthened Kemet navy, and Persian and Persia turned away and moved against Cyprus. Akar died in 380 BC, but his son did not succeed him, being ousted by. Uh, Hold on, sorry. He was ousted by 
Oh my god. Okay, yeah, he was ousted by uh, Nick Tepeth, also known as Nick Tan, uh, Nick Tambo the first of the Simbin uh, Yanist, who founded the 30th dynasty. A combined per Persian and Greek force entered Kemet from the western Mentis side of the delta, bypassing the strongly fortified and usual access through the eastern delta fortress of Pelusium. Uh, Fortunately for Nick Temple, after being defeated, the strange allies displayed in their march on Memphis, distrusting each other, which gave him time to regroup, launch a successful counterattack, and fling them out of Kemet. Local conditions played a big part in his success. The, the in, Indonesian gave the Kemetans the advantage in a flooded landscape they knew well. Nictenpol I achieved much in his stable 18-year reign, restoring temples throughout the land and, in particular, erecting the small Caicos on the sacred island of uh, Philae that was to blossom into one of the most sacred and delightful sites of later Kemet. He was succeeded by his son, Thetzels, also known as Jeter, by his wife, uh, you just, you just, just who, who immediately began to move against Persia, supported by Greek mercenaries and hoping to gain Syria, because of heavy tax impositions to pay for the mercenaries. Vils was unpopular in Kemet. In his absence, Thiel's son, uh, Tetja Hedpenmu, declared, de declared his own son, Vessel's grandson, king, as uh, Nectambo II, also known as Nunthoheb. And Thiel's fled to uh, Theos fled to sanctuary at Susa after a short two-year reign. The first eight years of uh, Nantikbo's, uh, Nick Tanbo's, the second's reign were protected from Persian aggression by that country's own dynastic squabbles and consequent problems. Okay, so before I move on, because then I'm going to go into the second period there. All right, um, so basically there was some the uh, Kemites was able to somewhat be able to remove the Persians or keep the Persians at bay. At this time, Kemet had built a strong navy at this time and this was during the time of the uh, um, indigenous dynasties uh, so we did have some indigenous dynasties that kept coming back and forth to try to retain Kemet and, but they wouldn't they didn't last that long as was the 26th dynasty which was actually declared the um, the last indigenous dynasty which was able to hold power for a very long time whereas these other dynasties like dynasty 28 dynasty 29 and dynasty 30 um, they were only able to hold it at a short period of time and also there was also infighting um, as it mentioned the uh, the last, uh, the last pharaoh of the 30th dynasty, uh, 
he wasn't too popular. You know, he was, you know, he couldn't mount up a um, military force of mercenaries to uh, fight the Persians and repel the Persians. But um, at this point, if anyone knows about it, when a country starts hiring mercenaries and they're unable to successfully have their own people to enlist or have a well-organized military, um, that becomes a problem because now you become you you at the mercy of foreign mercenaries. These people have no loyalty to your country. They can turn on you as quickly as they had joined you. They're only there for the money. You're basically paying an a, a army for hire. And if you don't have the money, there's either two things mercenaries would do. They'll either turn on you and join the enemy. Or they'll start ransacking your country and take whatever resources you have there. Or and, number, and the third thing they'll do is overthrow the, the leadership there and take over. So you have, you know, these are the things that happens. It's a, it's, a, it's a benefit to have a mercenary force, but then there's a, also a, a con to it as well. Okay, so let's go into this a little bit further. By 350 BC, however, the new Persian ruler, Artaxerxes III, had sufficiently reestablished authority over most of the empire to contemplate attacking Kemet uh, contemplate the attacking Kemet but the expedition failed word of this spread and soon Greek and Lanthantine Lam cities were once more militarily challenging the Persian might at first with a degree of success the temple the second reign is characterized by a definite return to the old values and stability brought by the gods. Temples were built or refurbished and the king was presented as the pious one under the gods protection. This is well amplified in a superb large stone statue in the Metropolitan Museum, New York of Horus the Falcon wearing the double crown. Between its legs, it has a uh, diminutive figure of Nittable wearing the nimbus headdress and carrying a curved uh, harpish and a small shrine. Not only is it a striking statue, it is also an icon reflecting the age-old clash between Horus, good the king of Kemet, and Seth, evil and Persia. Not least, it is also a clever pawn or repus since its symbolism, since it symbolized the king's name as strong. The Harpish is Horus of uh, Bapet, the shrine, the later being a temple now much ruined dedicated to the goddess Isis in that delta city. Greek mercenaries fought for both Kemet and Persia and it was with some 20,000 Greeks forming about one-fifth of his army that Nectable stood at uh, Pelism, the eastern delta fortress entrance to Kemet in 343 BC against the latest Persian advance. Greek generalship of the Persian side outflanked the Kemetans. Pelism fell followed by other delta strong points and Memphis itself soon afterwards, forcing Nectanbo to take refuge in Nubia. 
Persian rule was established in Kemet once more. Okay, so now the clash you had the twenty thousand Greeks forming one fifth of the of his army, Netubal the second, and there was a great battle. Um, they also the Persians had Greek mercenaries and had uh, also Greek generals who was also good. But they were able to push far into Kemet, into their strongholds, like uh, Pelidism, um, another place, another stronghold in the Delta region, Memphis. And once Memphis fell, that was over. And then um, the Pharaoh retreated towards Nubia. You'll notice that the Pharaohs always retreated southward, right? And they retreated into Nubia. You can only do that if you have a resemblance of the people who live in that region. So this is a clear indication showing you that the pharaohs were people of African descent. You couldn't be a pharaoh looking like a European and go down into Nubia and, and live there in exile. Okay, so not back in those days. So most likely he fled southward. He fled further into the African interior. Okay, so that alone should give you more info. Now, before I go into this, um, I was connecting with other uh, members or other individuals who's also descendants of Ramses the Third, as I am. And we, you know, one of the guys he did a YouTube video. It was a nice video he did, and he showed he broke down the DNA, uh, DNA testing and all that stuff, like I did in my first episode. And he went in it, into it a little bit further. There's a guy, you got people still in these comments coming in here talking about, oh no, that DNA is wrong, it's, it's a DNA of this person, uh, the pharaohs were not African. You still have these Egyptologists going in there stating this garbage. It's, it's so much evidence proving that these pharaohs was uh, African. Not just the statues. They did DNA on a couple of these files and found out they have more um, links to Africa than they do to Europe and any other place. Um, you have famous ancient historians like Herodotus and, uh, and many others, Greeks, who stated what the, what the ancient Kemites looked like. Okay, so... We, you know, we need to, those of us who, who are true cometologists need to fight back these Egyptologists and stop them from do, perpetrating these lies and frauds. We need to fight back and claim our history. But let's go forward uh, with this. What became of uh, Nectabot II is unknown. A splendid, large, and complete First, uh, Ushhutet figure of the king, unpronounced, uh, acquired by Tehran Museum in the 19th century, plus 10 other known uh, fragments are all that remains and point to preparations being made for his royal burial, uh, possibly at uh, Sussus. His tomb was probably destroyed under the Ptolemy, uh, Ptolemies in the British Museum is a huge black granite sarcophagus finely carved all over with texts and scenes from the book of what is in the underworld inscribed by uh, Neg Tanbo II. It was never used and was found in Alexandria where having had holes cut through its lower walls into the interior. It was later employed as a bath, often called Alexander's bath. So you see how these uh, <laughs> people, curiously in medieval legend recounted in the Alexander romance. Nick Temple is said to have fled to the 
Macedonian court <coughs> excuse me to the anti-Persian faction there he was recognized as a great commandant musician attracted the attentions of the Macedonian kings Philip II's wife Olympias and became the father unbeknown to Philip II of Alexander the Great thrust continuing in due course the pharaoh breed line legend for Alexander uh, there's no evidence of that is, uh, here they go starting that um, the second Persian period now we're going to go into the second Persian period this is the second Persian dynasty that took over right after the 30th dynasty when Kemet fell to the Persians in 343 BC, the reign of uh, Net Temple II, the last Kemetan pharaoh, came to an end. He was also the last Kemetan to rule Kemet for 2,300 years, 2,300 years, until General uh, Net Gohub and the 1952 revolution the Persian reaction according to later Greek accounts which are obviously biased was severe okay general uh, Nicola, this was the general who uh, let me just explain this this now when they say 1952 this is the Arabs the Arabs are the ones who's occupying Egypt right now these are not the descendants of ancient Kemet. Um, the 1952 revolution is when they overthrew the Egyptian king uh, this, and he was the king of a uh, Arab dynasty King Farouk the second of uh, Egypt. So the, you see how they try to um, link because the Pharaoh uh, uh, Net II was the one was a last indigenous, okay, and then uh, twenty three hundred years un until General Net. Now they're trying to say General Net like he was indigenous. He's not indigenous. He's, he's an Arab. He's not indigenous to Egypt. He's a descendant of people who came um, during the Islamic. Um, expansion in uh, into Africa it came into Egypt first and then it spread it out so um, that's this is why you have to get this history correct okay cities were slighted temples treasuries robbed sacred animals such as the Apis uh, uh, Min uh, Minivis and uh, Bacchus bull were slain and the people enslaved with taxes. Once more, a Persian uh, satrap this time ruled for an absentee king in Susa, whereas the first Persian dynasty had lasted from 525 until 404 BC. This time the occupation was for only a decade. Artaxas III was poisoned in Persia in 330 in 338 BC and his younger his young successor Aris survived for only 2 years to be murdered and succeeded by Darius III. There is little evidence of this period of Persian uh, hegemony in Kemet. Artaxas struck Athenian style silver at Memphis with an inscription in uh, demonic, a cursive and difficult to read script derived from hieroglyphs, giving his name, and only two specimens survive. Uh, Masilus, who was uh, started up under Darius III, struck similar copies of 
Athenian uh, uh, what's this Tetradrachton but with his own name on them in Aramaic he it was who wisely opened the gates of Kemet to Alexander the Great in 323 BC saving the country and his own skin and was transferred to high office in Babylon okay so there you have it that was the last dynasty the 31st dynasty which was a foreign dynasty okay so this now we're going to go into the Greek dynasty which is the Macedonian kings this is the Macedonian king period and we're going to go into that and this the the kings of this period in uh, Kemet which I'm going to call Egypt right now because this is no longer Kemet uh, once the Greeks came in so Alexander the Great was the founder of the Macedonian dynasty Philip second ruler Alexander the fourth was the third and final ruler of the Macedonians the, um, dynasty here so we, we're going to get into that and discuss that we're going to talk about that on next Monday which will be May the 2nd so on May the 2nd at 5 p.m. Central Time 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time 4 p.m. Mountain Time and 3 p.m. Pacific Time we will talk about the Macedonian um, dynasty of Egypt and um, it, their role uh, because at this point Kemen is no longer Kemen it's Egypt at this point I, I call it Egypt at this point I don't even call it Kemen anymore uh, because of the Greek um, influence in uh, Kemet at this time and um, Alexander's line didn't last for too long so and then right after that, we're gonna go into the Ptolemaic dynasty notice that they were not considered dynasty 32 and dynasty 33 so we're, we'll go into this and um, <clears throat> talk about this more uh, so thank you for tuning in I hope you uh, enjoy the show enjoy the rest of your week as I mentioned the show will air uh, next Monday and we'll talk about the Macedonian Kings thank you for your support please remember to subscribe and hit that like button enjoy the rest of your day and God bless